Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Mining has become a big thing within Elite, with many players earning millions upon millions of credits from the activity. Now, whilst the knowledge of deep core mining is certainly widespread, I have noticed that even to this day, a significant number of people are asking questions about it. Some are unsure what it is, whilst others are unsure how to do it. With that in mind then, here is a look at what Void Opal Mining is all about. Before we begin though, let's get an important piece of information out of the way. Over the years, there have been a lot of unofficial so-called gold rushes in Elite. By gold rushes, I mean methods of gameplay that generate 100 million credits per hour or more. And by unofficial, I mean methods of gameplay that uh, essentially are unintended or use unintended mechanics or take advantage of gameplay loopholes. One example of this would be skimmer missions where players could stack multiple missions and then complete them all with a single shared objective. Those type of credits earning methods are usually patched out of the game fairly quickly. Now, void opal mining and indeed deep core mining in general is a completely different story. Whilst mining now earns around 100 million credits per hour, this gameplay is entirely intended and fully supported by Frontier. Okay, so to begin mining, you will need a few things equipped to your ship. Whilst I won't go through a full ship build here, I will tell you the essentials. Firstly, for the ships, a mid-sized ship is more than good enough. I gathered 80 million credits worth of resources in around 1.5 hours using an Asp Explorer, which really isn't a highly expensive ship. A Python is also very good for mining, and other people also like to use a crate. So here's the needed equipment. A refinery. Now you don't really need a large refinery for deep core mining as you will only be collecting a few different resources. Three or four different ones at tops, so a, three ice, uh, a 3A sized refinery is more than enough. Prospector limpets and collector limpets. Again, you won't need large sizes for these. Simply choose whatever you are comfortable with and don't forget to collect the limpets before you leave the station. The pulse wave scanner is essential in order to detect the valuable asteroids. Detailed surface scanner, you'll want one of these so that you can detect hotspots in ring systems. Abrasion blaster, these allow you to shoot chunks of resources off of asteroids so make sure you take at least one of these. And these seismic charges, you'll need these to blow apart the asteroids. Okay, so finding a relevant hotspot is the first task. Now I often hear people saying that you need to look for pristine quality rings. In my experience, that isn't necessary, and whilst it may give you more hotspots or higher uh, chances of finding what you actually want, I haven't actually found that to be the case, but that may just be me. At any rate, you can find void opals in any quality ring, just so long as it is an ice ring. Also, keep in mind that hotspot locations do deplete. This means that over time there will be less hotspots available in any given system as people mine them out. Locating an ice ring is actually very easy. Simply check the galaxy map and look at different systems until you find what you're looking for. Ice rings are very common, so it shouldn't take you long. Now, the other day, I intentionally set out on a mining trip using this method to prove that it can be done. Just, you know, use the galaxy map and find what you want. Once inside the system, head on over to the ice ring and then shoot probes into it using your detailed surface scanner. Not all ring systems will have a hotspot, and, more and the more players that have been mining the rings, the less hotspots that ring will actually have. However, the hotspots do replenish over time, and they'll come back in the same locations, although the rate at which this happens does seem to be unknown. To enter a hotspot, simply fly towards it. Now don't fly towards the centre of the hotspot, as that is where everyone else will go. Asteroids and their resources are persistent in Elite, so if you go to the same location as everyone else, then you won't be able to find resources as everyone else will have mined them. Instead, head away from the centre of the hotspot. These hotspots are truly massive, in some cases with a diameter of over 30,000 kilometres or more, and for comparison's sake, Earth has a diameter of 12,700 kilometres. Finding an unmined spot then should be very, very easy. Keep flying towards your chosen spot and then slow down as you don't want to hit the ring too fast. Once you are close enough, your ship will automatically drop out of supercruise. Once inside the ring, activate your pulse wave scanner. Pulse wave scanners have a different range depending on the quality of the scanner you purchased, but try flying a good distance above the asteroids so that you can get the best field of view. You will notice that the scanner sends out a wave. 
highlighting each asteroid, marking them in blue, but ones with resources show up in orange and yellow. What you're looking for are bright yellow ones, like this one right here. These asteroids will have fissures in them, and you need these in order to break open the asteroid. First thing to do is to fire a prospector limp into the asteroid, and this will show you what it contains. Make sure you select your uh, prospector as it flies off into space or when it attaches to the asteroid, and you'll see on the left-hand side of your HUD there's a list of resources. You look in for the blue text at the bottom of this list. It will show you uh, what's in the center of the asteroid, if there's anything actually there. If there's no blue text, then move on to another asteroid. Good resources to collect are Benautite, Alexandrite, Low Temperature Diamonds, and Void Opals. All of these have values of over 500,000 credits per item, with Void Opals being the most valuable at 1.6 million credits per unit. A tip here, don't pay attention to the galactic average value for these items, as they are far lower than what you can actually get. Now that you have prospected the asteroid, check your contacts panel. You'll see that the asteroid has fissures. As you cycle through these, you will notice that they have different strengths. There are three types of strength, low, medium and high. Low strength fissures mean there are an area of weakness on the asteroid. Damaging these will do significant damage to the asteroid. High strength fissures on the other hand are strong. These fissures are extremely resistant to damage and hitting these will do low damage to the asteroid. Average strength fissures, as you might expect, are in the middle. So now you'll want to use your seismic charger. This module deploys explosives into the asteroid fissures. Now if you're using fixed hardpoints, then you should be quite accurate, or else the charges have potential to bounce off the asteroid and fly off into space. If you're using turreted hardpoints, it will be quite a bit easier. The hardpoint has to be charged in order to fire. Holding down the fire button will determine the strength of the charge. You can see the strength of charge on the targeting reticule and also to the right of the HUD. A quick press with the fire key will launch a weak charge. Holding the fire down for a length of time will deploy a strong charge. Holding down for a couple of seconds will fire a medium charge. And this is where it can get a bit tricky. You need to damage the asteroid enough to break it open. If you don't deploy enough explosives into the asteroids, it will remain intact and you will lose the fissures. Alternatively, if you damage the asteroid too much, it will break open but you will lose most of the resources. Around three quarters of the resources actually get lost, in fact, if you do it too, uh, too strong. This means then that you need to go for optimal charge. So I'm sure you remember the different strength fissures. Well, this comes into play right now. Here, I deploy a high strength charge into a low fissure. This means I will do maximum possible damage to the asteroid. Always begin the process by firing into a low strength fissure. Now you can see a graph predict with, uh, showing predicted damage we need to get this graft into the optimal zone. Currently, it's pulsing on three bars, and this means there's room for another max damage explosive. So put another high charge into a low strength fissure. However, sometimes you will need to go and top up the damage. Maybe if there was uh, four bars pulsing or a little bit more, then you will need to fire some low charges into a high fissure. You may need to do this a few times on occasion. Do keep in mind that from the moment you deploy the first charge, a timer will begin and you only get two minutes to complete this entire explosive process. Once you reach optimal charge, you can wait for the countdown to complete, or alternatively, you can use the detonate now option. It's also possible to disable specific charges from this same menu if you feel the need to do so. Do keep a good distance from the asteroid when it explodes, as it will damage your shields and potentially your ship. Once the asteroid has broken open, you'll have access to all the resources inside. You can shoot these off by using your abrasion blaster and collect the resources using your collector limpets. Now when you have enough resources, when you're either fed up or when you've got a full cargo hold or whatever, you can leave. But the important thing to remember is to not sell these for the galactic average price as you can get far more money for them. But the question is where to sell them for high prices. Well here's the really, really strange thing about this update. Back in chapter one, Frontier made a minor improvement to trade. Personally, I didn't find it a very helpful improvement, but it was an improvement nonetheless. This allows for players to use the galaxy map to locate trade routes that other players are using for specific commodities. However, it had a very limited range and really wasn't that helpful. So now, making this feature even further redundant, Frontier have, for some reason, excluded the new commodities from this list. That means we have to rely on external websites to locate stations that purchase these items for a good price. 
Fortunately, websites EDDB and Inara have us covered for this. Go to the commodities list for the respective website, select the commodity, and you'll be able to see the locations for the best prices. So there we go then. Hopefully that gets everyone up to date on how to do deep core mining and sell void opals as well as the other commodities for extremely high prices. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.